All right, and here we go, and I can finally officially on the Stronger Together podcast say we are under a week to the USET and ULMA event, and I'm extremely excited to have an opportunity to talk to presenters throughout the last two weeks, getting you excited, getting you up to date, and sharing some of the work that they are doing. And, and today, I want to bring in another one of our featured presenters from New Jersey going out to Ohio. We have Kate Baker from Book Widgets. So Kate, thanks for jumping in. Thanks for having me, Matt. I'm excited to be here. And I can't wait to get to USET and Utah and all the fun things that are going to happen in Salt Lake. Awesome. So one of the things that we've been sharing is your journey into the field and your journey into education. Can you share that with our audience? Absolutely. So Education has always been a bit of a family business. Uh, both of my parents are veteran educators. My my dad taught uh, high school math before he transitioned out of the classroom to work uh, for the juvenile uh, detention system in New Jersey. And then my mom was a long time <laughs> physical education educator. She taught for like 35 years in the um, the school district that myself, my siblings, and even my daughter went through. Um, so I taught high school English freshman for 20 years before I transitioned out of the classroom to work for Edmodo full time. Um, but I've still kept my, you know, hand in the pot, you know, as I transitioned out of the classroom and into the ed tech space full time. Uh, I still uh, coach the swim team that I founded 20, oh, wow. okay. 22 years, 20, 20 something years ago. <laughs> and that the team that my daughter swim on now. And, um, and I also am an adjunct professor for the college of New Jersey. Oh, so, wonderful. you know, initially pre pandemic, I left the classroom to go work with educators around the world through uh, Edmodo's platform. And then unfortunately, Edmodo closed uh, a year and a half ago, or almost two years ago now. And, um, and I joined the uh, book widgets team. So and I'm now their head of community engagement. So again, I still get to work with educators around the world, uh, trying to find ways to make authentic learning, you know, transition it from that physical classroom space into the digital realm. Wonderful. So the real important question for me, for sure. Yeah. What college did your mother go to? Do you know? She went to a little school up in Rhode Island. Okay. Because TT as a, High School. Yeah. And then she came back to Jersey and, and then. Um, I meant for college. Yeah, for college. Yeah. Okay. She went to an itty bitty little school in, in Rhode Island. All right. As a former physical education major at Springfield College, I always ask because uh, it's like a kinship of, of folks that, that go through that program. So um, give her a big shout out. I know how much work and effort that goes into that. Absolutely. And, and speaking of work and effort, talk about how that transition going from Edmodo, I think you said, into book widgets. Like, what is that transition like? And what is something you really have thrived with in this community program that you have? Well, what it's enabled me to do is to to step back from the day to day operations of a classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, we get so bogged down in the minutia, the paperwork, you know, all of the, you know, I taught high school English. So I well know that bag of papers that I lugged back and forth day to day um, grading essays. And so in the space that I'm able to be in now, I'm able to affect change on a larger scale and from a place that also has influence on the classroom space. So, you know, ed okay. tech is boomed, right? Like sure. I can't tell you how happy I was when I no longer had to do bubble sheets for grades or <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And like Google docs. Oh my God. I was like, Oh, amazing. And like spell check. Oh my God. You know, right, I'm things, in. <laughs> right. <laughs> like these utilities. Right. So it just made my life so much easier. So it was always about like, okay, how can I help the profession as a whole? You know, how can we move education forward as a whole? So mm -hmm. whether it's thinking about, you know, integrating paperless, flipped, blended learning strategies, or if it's looking at how to do social emotional learning, you know, on a day to day basis infused that it doesn't feel like it's 
something extra. Like these are the things that I'm passionate about. And this gives me a space to like take all those teaching skills that I have and to utilize them in a new way. Awesome. So one of the things that, uh, is it your first time at, at USET? Yes. I have not been to USET before. Been to many conferences. Love, always love the conference circuit, you know, going to ISTE and I was at Nice Skate for the first time this year too. Oh, really? Did I see you there? I might, I might have. I seen saw you. you yes. No, we cross paths. Okay. Yes, um, I was the the closing person there, yes. and um, I love that event, and and I'm hoping to fall in love with USET as well because I love the small, more intimate events. I know it's going to be like three thousand people, but like just like Nice Skate, it has that feel. It's all inclusive. It's yeah. bringing people together, and and it's great. And you have the the luxury at, at book widgets that you have a dedicated room each day. So the first day you're in 255 F and you're going to be going through all of these great topics. If you would love to, if you wouldn't mind giving some background, I'm going to take that banner off so everyone can see for now. Yeah. What, what What's some of the work you're going to be doing essentially all day long? So the first three sessions uh, are all about, you know, working smarter, not harder. So we're assembling your digital technology toolbox for classroom success. And what we're doing is we're going to showcase how to use book widgets either as something standalone. So that's the third session um, with 40 time saving templates or to use it in conjunction with uh, learning management management system. Whew, I can say that. Yeah, so with an wow. LMS like Google Classroom uh, or in our second, that's going to be the first one is Google Classroom. And then we, our second session is on Microsoft Teams, Moodle, Schoology, Canvas, Blackboard, like kind of smushing those more um, other sessions all together, mm -hmm. those other learning management systems. Awesome. So um, as I had up there below, and then I'm going to throw it back up while I, I kind of talk to you. So when individuals come in and, and learn these pieces, besides the programmatic piece, what I've really liked working with solution providers like book widgets is that you are educators. You're not sales individuals. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and what are some of the, the you know, you, we saw the topics, but what are you hoping participants take away from there? Again, again, Working smarter, not harder. Making your students thinking visible in a way that you're not sending them all over the wild, you know, World Wide Web. You know that you can say to your students, "Okay, we're going to go to um, sign into Google Classroom. Today's assignment is right there for you." But it's not just you know the nitty gritty. Oh, you know, kind of boring. Let's do a digital worksheet. It's really about making it interactive for your students. Maybe it's um, using some drag and drop stuff to work on those fine motor skills or using a whiteboard question to make their thinking visible. But it's all about then that entire feedback loop. The students perform, the teacher can monitor in real time what's going on and then can take action based on that information. If they wanna do um, follow up face to face with the student, they wanna do automated feedback, uh, which is there's so many accessibility features we also have um, to be able to allow students, again, to show what they know, that the teacher can see it, and then the teacher can give that feedback to the student to keep the wheels moving as they progress through their learning journey. Awesome. So we showed the, the Tuesday schedule, which was packed. I hope you're able to get some, some time for, for yourself and learn some, some as well. And then Wednesday, which you're going to be in 255A, what I really like about this, one, the morning you can get out and see the show floor and maybe attend some sessions if you want, but you're talking about using the resources you have for social emotional learning. You're talking about building resiliency and joy. And how is that possible with a tech tool? Okay, so it's about, it's about the technology is a vehicle. It's a space where you're able to connect with one another. So uh, during the SEL sessions, I'm gonna tell you a little bit also too about my story and my background. Um, you know, as a head of community uh, engagement, it's all about that notion of being better together and yeah. being able to, you know, leverage the power of the room, you know, that I'm not the smartest person in the room, but collectively we're gonna have some amazing synergy. So we're going to take a look at how um, the CASEL framework, I don't know if you're familiar with yep. The, yep, the CASEL framework, and how we can align how we use technology to fit the core competencies of CASEL. 
So thinking about, you know, um, uh, relationship skills, you know, being able to communicate with one another in a collaborative manner. How can we use technology for those means? How can we use technology for uh, self-management, for reflection, for metacognition? You know, so I'm, I'm going to share not just book widgets, but also quite a number of other uh, tools and techniques so that we're bringing, again, that joy and authenticity back to learning, that it's not just rebounding from the pandemic and just, you know, get back to normal, but look at how we can use the technology as a tool and a vehicle to get to where we want to go. Yeah, I like it. I like uh, that. That That is great. So I know you don't have a ton of time, but you have some maybe Wednesday morning or just from the socials or different things. What are you looking to leave with? Because I know when, when you walk in, I know, uh, you know, book widgets, you have a lot going on within your own ecosystem, but you as an educator and you being a community, you know, representation for the, the team, what are you hoping to leave Utah with? Uh, strong personal connections, you know, um, being able to connect with folks face to face is one of my favorite things about going to conferences. It's like family reunions, but also looking at, you know, um, the big buzzwords, AI, <laughs> how right. can we use that in a way that's authentic, that again, it's a tool, um, not a replacement for teachers. Um, so I'm definitely interested in seeing the you know tips and tricks that other folks are sharing. But I also just want to hear the stories. I just want to meet people and see and learn about, you know, what are they doing in the classroom with their students and hear their personal story. Awesome. So one of the things that, that I like to kind of dive into how do you see book widgets just to talk a little bit about it to give you kind of some some time to share about it. how have you seen success stories in schools so book widgets is all about uh content creation so okay. we're putting the power of content creation in the teacher's hands so it's not a canned curriculum it's not um yeah we have plenty of examples that you could play with but but really it's about we're giving you the building blocks you know to go create uh let's say uh, you want to do some gamification. Uh, you, we got jigsaw puzzles. We got um, word searches. We got crosswords. But it's in how you use those things that can be really powerful and simple. Like one of my favorite things um, to show off is using the jigsaw puzzle for a do now. So gotcha. um, I know next month is going to be um, National Poetry Month. Sure. So take a screenshot of a poem that you're going to study in class, turn that into a jigsaw puzzle. That becomes your do now. The students come in, you say, okay, what are we going to learn about today? Let's tease the lesson, solve the puzzle, mm -hmm. and then talk about the poem with your, your partner. But something additional to do with that is that when they solve the puzzle, you can also have some audio that can play to the students. Awesome. So the teacher could record a short mini lecture on, you know, how to, um, you know, give some context about the poem. They could also include audio of the poet actually reciting the poem, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so that type of like multimedia can be pretty powerful. I've also seen too, um, one of our ambassadors, I, I had also, I should say, I really should have said this in the very beginning, <laughs> is that uh, <laughs> I lead the ambassador community for uh, Book Widgets. So I get to hear again, great stories. And um, Claudia, one of our ambassadors from Italy, she is a wizard with like app smashing uh, tools together. Um, Genially is a fun interactive mm -hmm. tool. Um, she loves to create uh, different activities for her, for her students um, to learn English, to learn Italian, to practice their skills. And she creates these really fantastic um, ex I can't even, like, I can't even call them exercises or activities. Cause it's like, just doesn't capture like what these right. things are. They're just treasures. Awesome. So you've talked a lot about this and you've talked about building teams. You've talked about the social emotion. You talked about a lot of the, the, the collaboration side of it. And that's what stronger together is all about. That's why I wrote that book about building community. But when I say stronger together to you in your role, what does that mean? It's, it's synergy. It is, um, like it is, I always 
I'm going to be really nerdy with you for a moment. <laughs> Go for it. Even though I taught high school English, I always, always think about um, the rule of ther <laughs> thermodynamics, that nothing is created from nothing nor destroyed into nothing, only changed in form. Okay. So I'm always thinking about that when you get a group of people together, like, yes, it's our individual things that we bring to the table and bring into that space. But then there's this amazing synergy that occurs. And that's to me what stronger together is because as individuals, yeah, that's great. But really when you get the collective together, you have this collective efficacy that can be really, really powerful. I like it. Awesome. Well, it was great to have you on. If you want to learn more about book widgets or iBook widgets, make sure to connect it at iBook widgets. All the website information is on there. If you want to see all the work that Kate is doing at the event, make sure to follow at KTBKR4. Yeah. Um, I see this short for Kate Baker 4. I like it. Yeah, and, I'm for a lot of things. <laughs> uh, I like it. So, um, I look forward to seeing you in under a week. I'll make sure to swing into the to the room. Like I said, the two sessions that they are going to be hosting on Tuesday, it'll be in 255F. And on Wednesday, it'll be in 255A. Go in, check out all the great things that Katie is bringing with her from Jersey all the way to Utah. So yeah. Kate, thanks for thanks for making time. And I look forward to seeing you in Salt Lake. Thanks, Matt, for having me. I can't wait to see everybody. All right. And for those of you who've been watching or now watching back on repeat, go in and check out all of the interviews to get ready for the USAT and ULMA event. We'll be coming to you from Salt Lake City on March 19th and 20th. Kate, we'll see you in Utah. See you there.